Okay, this one is called Why do some people hate anime? Uh, probably because of lolicons. Probably because of this degenerate fan service that is so appalling to the Western audience. If you are Japanese or you understand Japanese culture and you've been watching anime for a long time, you turn a blind eye, right? Myself included. There's a lot of stupid fan service, like gushing over magical girls, for example. Kind of uncomfortable for the common person just coming into anime and saying, holy shit, what's happening? Some people may enjoy it, but I think even more people would find it fucking weird. Let's see what Kitsune anime has to say. I want to paint a picture for you. Okay. You just finished watching an anime, and not just any anime, but one that is truly Fureden. special. The characters, the story, everything about it rings so true. Apothecary and Diaries. you know that this is an experience that will stick with you for a lifetime. It's the yeah. Kind of when was the last time I had that kind of experience after watching or completing an anime? Well, honestly, ReZero. Like, season one was such an impactful show. It just, like, that shit was crazy, right? I'd say even like Mushoku Tensei with his hard-hitting themes. Any other random just seasonal anime that just came out of nowhere and just hit me like a truck? Don da don. Yeah, episode 7 alone, you watch that shit and you're like, holy, that was cinema. Kind of anime that once you finish watching it, you just can't stop thinking about it. It mm. burns within your thoughts like a white hot fire and you just can't help but feel like you need to share this experience with someone you know. So with Absolutely right. And this is the core essence of reaction content. People are social creatures that long to be acknowledged by others, right? I'm not saying that everyone is desperate for attention, but there is this base level of wanting to be accepted, wanting our opinions and our world views, right? To be affirmed by other people to know that, oh, maybe I'm not crazy. Maybe we really did enjoy all this shit together and it actually is that peak. And then like that eventually turns into such a market for people to enjoy reaction content because of the nature of someone else finally seeing something that you've seen and you want to see their commentary, their reaction. How did they feel or think about your favorite moments, right? This is why reaction content is so compelling, despite a lot of people saying it's the most lazy garbage content that shouldn't exist on YouTube. And I agree, it is very lazy, but entertainment value and effort this is not proportionally scaling. Without hesitation, you message a friend about it, eager for them to possibly share in this incredible euphoria you feel after having experienced this amazing You gotta watch story. this, bro. And when you get that text back from your friend and giddily read over the message, your enthusiasm begins to fade Oh. as you read the dreaded words from your friend that populate onto your screen. Oh man, Frieden, bro. Come on, check out Frieden, number friend. Yeah, that's not a good feeling, right? This is like, oh man, they actually don't watch anime and now I got no one to talk to it with. That's why people seek out online communities, different group chats of like-minded individuals because your IRL friends, they're probably normies, right? They're not into all this weird shit that we enjoy over here. Another thing is when you hype up an anime because you enjoyed it so much, suddenly that can lead to that person that you're hyping it up to for them to experience it in a worse way. Because sometimes, like how many times has this guy's happened to you guys where like someone will hype the shit out of something and you're like, okay, I hear you, I'll check it out. And you watch it and you're like, it was good, but this wasn't like life-changing. And that's because you had a level of expectation. Someone set this standard this bar that honestly maybe not even been met possibly and because of the expectation this person is now going into it with much higher standards much more willing to scrutinize and maybe you're a little bit more biased rather than having an open mind to absorb everything for what it is and kind of ruins the show sometimes so you gotta like ease people into it you, you can't just be like this is peak this will change your life watch it you gotta be more like bro have you heard about this show? Oh, bro, you got no idea what you're missing out on. Then you got to slowly ease them in. Oh, I, I don't really like anime. Womp womp. You feel somewhat crushed 
and maybe even a little judged. You begin to think of ways that you can still maybe convince them to watch it, but you know the writing's on the wall. There's no getting through to them. And it's in that moment you realize mm. you can no longer be friends. <laughs> okay, come on. That's a little bit too much, right? Um, yeah, it's discouraging, right? You have something that you enjoy so much and you want to share it with other people, but they just don't care. And I mean, it, it doesn't mean that like, like you shouldn't feel bad about it. It's just you should feel more like, oh, man, you got no idea what you're missing out on. And ideally, they would be able to enjoy it and talk about it with you and you have more fun. But just because someone doesn't want to watch it doesn't mean that like it suddenly like makes your experience, the investment that you put in moot. Right. That is something special to you. And you should keep that independent of other people's assessments or, you know, how much they receive that with this person. OK, well, maybe not that far, but you are a little bit bummed. I'm sure that there's probably a number of us that have been there before. Right. Yeah, Where one of your sure. friends is adamant about disliking anime and don't really seem like they'll ever really change their mind. Now, as someone who makes anime content on YouTube, I'm probably a little bit biased. Despite this, however, even I have to admit that there are things about anime I'm not as big of a fan of. So I can see how any number of these things could turn someone off and up to where they just don't really feel like giving anime the time of day. Nobody. And again, I think these, the reason why people are kind of like weirded out by anime, like I don't think people watching like One Piece would be weirded out. Naruto, Bleach, right? A lot of these like broad appealing battle shonens, there is definitely stupid fan service here and there, but for the most part, what is like the tip of the iceberg, right? What is the tip of the iceberg when trying to introduce normies to the anime? Isn't it always like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? Steinsgate, maybe even like Vinland Saga, basically anything that is away from degenerate slice of life Japanese high school setting with harems and fan service, where a girl is gonna fucking trip and suddenly a guy has his face up her crotch and he's got the hands full too, right? So <laughs> yeah, those kind of animes definitely is gonna weird out these normies. You gotta again ease them and you can't just send them to the dark, just like the deep pool, right? You, you got a Steins case very degen. I've heard that like, it's one of those like starter packs of, you know, easing people in, but maybe there are really degen moments, but I'm trying to think of it again. Animes that's not like a hundred girlfriends. Anime that's not like gushing over magical girls. Anime that's not like prison uh, chain soldier, right? Some people might actually enjoy that aspect, but a lot of people I'm sure will be kind of creeped out by it and it, it, that's why there's like this tip of the iceberg of like oh you gotta watch fma bro everybody is wrong for disliking anime that's just their opinion and some people associate anime with children animation that's also true right it's like uh they won't take the medium of anime seriously because they immediately cast it aside thinking it's children's cartoons that's kind of also why i portray my titles you know grown man christ children's cartoons like how much that makes people mad. Of course, it's a fucking ironic title, but some people I think definitely do think that anime is for kids. Why would I bother watching this medium of entertainment when I could be watching fucking remakes of Hollywood movies for the 17th time? and preference, and they're more than welcome to it. However, I do feel as though that some of the reasons people cite for their dislike of anime are a bit unfair or even downright ignorant, and aren't necessarily sound reasons to dismiss anime as a whole. So today, I wanted to talk about those reasons and why I disagree with them. All right. Which brings us to point number one. Anime there is it is. Kids. Now, this one in particular, I don't see as much nowadays. However, it is still something that I do still come across. Yeah, I haven't heard this take in a while as anime has gotten more mainstream and a lot more people are giving anime a chance and they realize that the depth of these stories are beyond what a kid should be, you know, watching. There's a lot of fucked up themes in anime that really goes to crazy storytelling, such exaggerated experiences that you would never find 
in any other sort of medium of entertainment. But this talking point, I do remember growing up hearing about this shit and was incredibly widespread when I was first really getting into anime. The notion that anime is for little kids and if you're above the age of 18, you shouldn't really be watching it. And as ignorant as a mindset like this is, I do see how someone could think like this. Per yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like when you grow up watching just like whatever anime is on TV, right? A lot of it's like what Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, even Beyblade. And we have a second channel, Kaka TV 2, where we only watch Beyblade reactions. And it's a children's cartoon. It's an anime, but a lot of people, you know, watched it growing up English dub. It doesn't matter. The semantics of cartoons, whatever. But the point is that Beyblade is meant for kids. Yet the themes, the storytelling, this shit's hype. This shit can be enjoyed by a broader audience. It can be enjoyed by a younger audience and an older audience. Like, I'm checking out Beyblade as a grown-ass man now, and I'm realizing that, holy shit, some of these themes, this is really heart-touching, this theme of, you know, never giving up. Obviously, the power of friendship and relying on others and that you don't have to do it by yourself. And also the ideal, like, the ideals of wanting to improve yourself individually and never giving up. A lot of these amazing lessons, it's not just for kids. If you watch it seriously with an open mind, you'll realize that, shit, this is, this is like really hype. Particularly if they live in America, like many of my viewers do. Of course, there's always exceptions, but for the most part, animation in America is viewed more as a children's medium. And True. this was no different when anime was blowing up in the States. The biggest, most mainstream anime from the 90s and early 2000s Inuyasha too, right? Anime boom were very much targeted or in some cases altered for younger audiences. I could Sailor see how Moon. anyone who grew up during this time then later grew out of cartoons could see shows like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! or even Toonami era DBZ and just yeah. assume that every anime is like this. I mean, they came out on children's programming blocks and two of the most prolific anime distributors in America were called Funimation and 4Kids. Doesn't really get the impression that they're working on things for adults yeah but you know it's the same thing with just shows on tv or movies there's movies specifically for kids right but there's also movies meant for a much more older audience different ratings of you know movies exist for a reason same thing with anime it's a fucking genre of medium of entertainment there's a spectrum of shows meant for unga boonga just kids or like neckbeard psychologist on like you know like fucking 30 40 year old like intellects there, there's such a wide spectrum of content that exists as anime something that is only perpetuated when you also take into account the generational gap most notably baby boomers or even early gen xers people born between the 1940s and the early 1970s a lot of millennials and gen zers that grew up with anime know that there's tons of anime for older audiences yeah but to the older generation they grew up watching stuff like tom and jerry looney tunes scooby-doo or even stuff like astro boy and speed racer shows Holy all shit, about are wacky old. antics or light-hearted adventures for children Children. To a lot of American society, this is just what animation is and ever will be. Not saying this is how animation should be seen, but in a lot of cases, it is. And it's yeah, the most popular, the most recognizable titles of what was considered anime or cartoons was always kind of hitting that younger audience. Therefore, one could definitely have this ignorant, but you know. It's a fair take, right? They grew up watching that shit. That's what is in their memories. Of course, if you would kind of expand on what's happening now, you would realize that there's so much more. But yeah, I could, I could understand why people would, you know, think like that. It's this mindset that keeps a lot of people from enjoying animation or taking it seriously as anything other than a children's medium. A lot of animation has to be made with children in mind because that's... Yo, this is Attack on Titan, but Puss in Boots. That's the only way it'll sell. And if it is for more mature audiences, typically it's going to be a comedic sitcom fueled by abundant adult humor like Family Guy or Rick mm. and Morty, so it's obvious that it's for adults. Of course, in modern times, we are beginning to see a shift towards less comedic adult animated content, but that doesn't change the fact that this is how it's been for a long time and that a lot of people do still have this mindset. A mindset that historically just hasn't been that widespread in Japan. For the most part, anime has always been seen as a medium that can be enjoyed by everyone there. 
the superior audience. And not in a, you know, the whole family can sit down and enjoy it, kind of. Uh, uh, yeah. There's some enemies that you could enjoy together. Uh, careful, though. Be careful with that. But more so in that there's just a ton of variety. Not only in what kind of shows there are, but what age groups those shows are aimed at. And I think there's kind of a cultural barrier there for certain people that didn't really grow up with anime or grew out of it. Sometimes it's hard to just look at an anime and immediately know who it's for. In one instance, the characters might be having some goofy, lighthearted fun and- Hmm, that's right. The aesthetics, the art style, right? It's a bait, it's a trap. Makes you give you into the sense of false sense of comfort and kindness. But turns out, boom, that gap moe, that contrast from the lighthearted way that it might have been seen or marketed. And you realize that there's way more darker themes. That's how anime sometimes gets you. It's like you would have never fucking expected it. Those kind of plot twists. And in the next, something incredibly traumatic and dark can happen. This can be kind of jarring for some people. Which brings me to the second reason someone might dislike anime. Okay. An anime and its fans are weird. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people could not be proud of anime and talk about it at public settings like schools or different clubs, unless it's not like an anime club, back in the day. It's more accepted now, but back in the day, you kind of are seen as this weirdo if you enjoy anime, right? And it's, there's something about anime and a bunch of people who are social outcasts, those who's been shunned by society for not being able to align with these normative values that society is placed on you and therefore you're kind of weird. And a lot of those people end up finding like a safe space, a community of enjoying anime together. And not everyone is weird, right? I, I, I don't know what the fucking statistics, the any empirical data that suggests like there's a significant portion of anime watchers that are weird compared to, I guess, normies. But it definitely is a stereotype that's been propagated that's been definitely, uh, Real, where a lot of people think that anime watchers, weebs are they're kind of weird, man. Anime and its fans are weird. I've heard this one a lot, and I can kind of get where certain people are coming from with it. Anime does have its tropes, and some of them are much less tolerable than mm. others. I the etchy, the pervy tropes, right? I get why anyone could have their hangups because of this, but I also think it is a bit of a generalization. Anime is just like any other form of media. It's going to have its tropes, yes, but those tropes are also going to vary from show to show. Just because you watch one creepy anime, that doesn't suddenly mean all of them are creepy. And That's right, right? Western TV, movies, there's a lot of creepy shit there too. Doesn't mean everything is the same, but... There's something more normalized in Japanese culture and anime culture where more etchy content that, again, makes people uncomfortable is normalized and they think that that shit's really weird. It's not for them. There's also a lot of more gooners that do enjoy that shit and really lean heavy into it. But it's, a, again, like a cultural barrier, an uncomfortable talking point that most people would rather just turn a blind eye on. And the same goes for the fans that like anime. I've seen a lot of people just kind of assume that all anime fans are either super immature because they watch stuff that's quote unquote for children, or they're all weirdos because obviously anime is weird, so that makes you weird too. And this can lead to these fans getting treated badly, undeservedly. If you have an anime character as your profile picture, some people might disregard your opinion altogether. And I mean, the amount of times that I've seen an anime profile picture just say the most outlandish, racist, homophobic, just ignorant things I've seen online is... It's definitely up there. <laughs> I don't think it's because they watch anime that they do this, right? Causation does not equal correlation, but... I've seen a lot of those occurrences, man. And again, this is a generalization. Every fan base is going to have miserable people within it. Exactly. Law of large numbers. The 1%. If we take an arbitrary value as 1% and scale it as the number gets bigger, 1% 1 of 100 is 1, 1,000 is 10, 10,000 is 100, 100,000 is 1,000. You see how this number of 1% can scale greatly and the outliers, the most radical people in any community will become more vocal as the number of enjoyers increase, which makes it seem like a lot of people are those 
vocal minorities, but a lot of people that do enjoy anime are just chilling. They're just chilling. They're just enjoying it. They don't engage in crazy weird behavior. They're just watching anime for what it is, and they enjoy it. But you got the fucking mentally ill schizos that always have to, you know, make it seem like the magnifying glass is zoomed in on, you know, this part of the fandom, which makes people think that everyone is just like them. Not just anime. And just like any other fan base, you can't just assume that everyone in that fan base is a bad apple. That's just not how human beings work. Agreed. And while I'm on the topic of fans, I should also point out that I don't really get the idea that a fan base can ruin a show. I feel like the fan community that forms around something shouldn't really be a factor when assessing the quality of that thing. I absolutely agree. When they say a fandom ruins the show, it's more like annoying motherfuckers that won't shut up about their anime or goes on to wage war against other fandoms that makes you not want to associate yourself with anime. Like, if you just unplugged yourself and just watch Attack on Titan, you just watch Boruto, My Hero Academia, whatever, right? If you just watch that shit, you would probably enjoy it. But if you're chronically online and you have these fucking anime profile picture, you know, accounts where their entire personality is an anime, just one single anime, and if you say something bad against it or criticize it, suddenly they just attack you because that's basically attacking their entire existence and well-being. Because again, these losers literally only identify themselves as a part of a fandom, which is so fucking cringe. Right? Fandom should not have any impact of you enjoying that anime. But if you associate, let's say, Boruto fandom as being crazy or My Hero Academia, and you want to watch these shows, but suddenly you have a bias. You think that people who watch this shit are fucking insane, therefore you don't want to give it a chance, right? That's where it kind of gets blurry. However, this could basically be a video in and of itself, so I'll just keep it at that and move on to reason number three. I think that if you, how do I put this? Being part of a community is great. Having people with similar interests and being able to talk about the things that you enjoy and making connections online, even if it's parasocial, can be very fulfilling. But the moments that you as an individual strip yourself of anything, not, not even strip, you never had anything, and you are riding the coattails of an established fandom a community, a brand, and your entire being is meat riding someone else, you should take a fucking look at yourself. So many rage bait accounts, so many retards online identify themselves as if they're the ambassadors of a certain anime, waging war, just imaginary fucking oppositions in their heads, just crying and screeching against other fandoms. Again, ReZero versus Mushoku Tensei, for example, right? I think those people are just absolute losers of society. You have no individuality. You have nothing for yourself. You latch onto other fandoms. And rather than talking about what you enjoy about your own show, you can only hate other people because they are not part of your fandom. That shit's got to be the most pathetic loser behavior. And I think that's so cringe. And if you can't recognize that, it truly shows how much lack of individuality or any self-respect you have for yourself. Because if you had any modicum of self-respect, you would realize that you are your own person and that you can create your own things and you don't have to identify your entire personality with this specific fandom. If you want to be in a fandom and enjoy these things and talk about those things again with other people, nothing wrong with that. They don't like the anime style. When hearing an opinion I don't really agree with, I always try my best to look at it from a perspective other than mine. Like the art, the production value, the way it's showed compared to, let's say, just movies or sitcoms. But this is one that I've always found kind of confusing. Anime isn't a genre or an art style. It's just a word that's used to categorize animation that... True. Anime is literally just animation in Japan, which is just... 
things being animated. Comes out of Japan. Anime, just like Western animation, has a huge variety of art styles and character designs. I just don't really get how anyone can take this vast amount of varying works of art and just lump it all under the quote unquote anime art style. For example, can you really look at Rama. something like Ranma one half and say it looks just like Ghost in the Shell? No, of course you can't, because like I said, they're created by different people with different art styles. Yeah, of course there's anime that are going to look at a glance similar to each other. <laughs> every isekai, every mid isekai that gets pumped out just does look identical, huh? But that's also the same for a lot of different media, not just anime. On top of this, I've also seen people criticize certain animation techniques that anime employs, like having characters remain completely static while only having their mouth move. And while this is true for a lot of anime, I personally would make the argument that anime, just like any other television show or film, have slower moments in their narrative narrative where complicated animation really isn't that necessary in Yeah, but also sometimes having these conversation scenes be only just static images is very lazy. If you've seen animes like Kaguya-sama and compare that to Classroom the Elite or even like the Monogatari series based on what I've seen from the clips of the head tilt, you can make conversational moments really engaging. But due to the lack of talent and effort it's just static fucking images. In these moments. Yes, there are anime that just have terrible animation throughout, but the opposite also applies. I feel like it's a bit unfair to only focus on the anime that have poor or stilted animation. Especially when just this year, an anime won the Oscar for Best Animated Film. In my yeah, this, again, this argument that anime art style is bad is so fucking stupid. Like... <laughs> Again, it's, it's just people that think that everything looks the same. Bro, take that concept, apply it to movies, TV shows, anything. They're all fucking different. There may be some isekais, again, that all look the same, but how the fuck could you say the art style is bad? Bro, there's so many varying degree, you know, art styles that exist in anime. My personal opinion, I really have not seen anything that impresses me as much as anime has. I love Western animation. It's been with me my entire life. To this day, Aladdin is still probably one of my all-time favorite films. I'm not saying that Western animation is bad, but what I am saying is that, to me, anime Anime is just on a completely different level. Let's and go. so it kind of makes me sad that there's people that won't even give it the time of day just because it is anime. Which brings me to my final point mm. and where I believe all of these hangups begin to combine into one. What is and it? that is that some people have just never given anime a chance. Yeah, again, these are just ignorant people who will never give something new a chance because they have preconceived notions, ignorant takes of what, you know, anime could be. You can't save them. You shouldn't try to convert them. They're missing out. Fuck them. This is a moment where you don't need, like, again, you don't need to convert people. You genuinely don't need everyone to watch anime. We already have a huge market of people and this may seem gatekeeping and, you know, I, usually it's better to have everyone enjoy it. But some people are beyond saving and you shouldn't focus on that. And those some people are also the outliers. Vast majority of people will try out anime. And another thing that I didn't even think about until now is the Japanese voice acting. That is a shock, a cultural shock to English only watchers, right? People can't, well, like... For example, they grew up watching Goku, English dub. Maybe some people try to watch Dragon Ball Super, and they watch it in Japanese dub. And they realize that it's a totally different experience because the voice acting is different. Some people, I think, genuinely find Japanese voice acting and reading subtitles annoying. I think their brains are retarded, and they can't process their, their, the hamsters in their brain. They don't have like four hamsters like me. They only have like one, right? Uh, they don't have quad core CPUs. They can't fucking process it. And, and then they're like, okay, I'll go watch, you know, English dub. And then there's also this huge war of subs versus dub. And you get bullied for watching dub. And now you feel like, shit, I'm not going to watch anime at all. I, I feel like this is just not my place. I feel like there's definitely some aspect of that where the Japanese voice acting and the nature of subtitles kind of turns people off.
This can relate to just about anything, not just anime. If our brain is dead set on not liking something, chances are we're going to be stubborn about not enjoying that thing. Yep. I know because I myself am guilty of this. Growing up, I never liked Lord of the Rings. Everyone talked about it like it was the greatest thing ever, constantly compared it to my favorite movies, and it was just everywhere. I got sick of it, and because of that... That phenomenon happens so much, where people feel like they're missing out. Everyone else is just talking about this one show. Demon Slayer, Demon Slayer, Demon Slayer, oh my god, Demon Slayer, oh, this is so peak, and you are now pissed off, because why? What's well, everywhere? And you haven't checked it out. And there's a part of you that doesn't want to check it out now. Just out of spite. In order to shut these people up. It's just like, oh my god, you guys talk about this as the next coming of Christ. I don't even want to watch it just to prove a point. And another part is, I think it has to do with this uh, fear of missing out. That you aren't part of the hype train. Other people are enjoying this shit and you haven't checked it out and... Now, part of you is like, am I missing out? Then you justify in your head, no, I'm not. And then later on, you give it a try and you realize, holy shit, this is actually really good. Um, this example, I think, was highlighted in an episode of Spongebob. Squidward does not want to eat a Krabby Patty. Everybody glazes Krabby Patty. And what does Squidward do? He took a tiny bite and he fucking loved it, but he didn't want to tell people. And late at night... He came into the restaurant and ate all the Krabby Patties, right? Sometimes it's just, it might be annoying. A lot of people are glazing. A lot of people are, you know, shouting about this show is great. You check it out. And rather than having a negative reaction, just be like, you know what? Maybe there's something great that I can dive myself into and check it out. It's all about having an open mind and, you know, kind of like separating this fear missing out part this i declared that not only did i hate lord of the rings but that i would never watch it to spite everyone who worshipped it i was bitter about it yeah he fucking died i went to his thighs and blew up listen if something is so good that you're willing to die for it it's probably peak my point still stands and looking back this was really stupid of me I was basically depriving myself of a super cool story just because I was being stubborn and not mm -hmm. even giving that thing a chance. Exactly. That stubbornness. I understand that feeling. Everybody understands this feeling. Everybody glazing it. The stubbornness comes from spite and that feeling of missing out and wanting to justify that you are not missing out. But just, just try it. Just, just fucking, it's not a big deal. Just try it. And I feel like this is something that people do with anime as well. There's a good chance that there's any number of people who had a bad experience with anime. And now, because of that one experience, would rather write it off completely than... Yeah, but that's so stupid again, right? Imagine watching one movie and never watching any movie ever again. It's just like, that one show does not represent this greater entity known as anime. Anime is not a monolith. It's not this one single type of thing. There's such a diverse variety of anime that exists out there. And if you label the entire substance, this entire entity known as anime, as just shit because you watch one bad one, like, listen, that does not apply to anime just world itself. That's such a terrible mindset that's going to follow into different things in life and you're going to be a loser. And ever give it a second chance. And look, people are allowed to have their opinions. If you're watching this and are shaking your head all the way through, disagreeing with everything that I say, then that's fine. I did give Evangelion and I hate it so much for how bad the storytelling is. You are saying that one of the greatest anime stories to have been ever told is terrible. I mean, I didn't watch it, so I can't really say shit, but uh, try saying that somewhere else. People are going to come out with fucking pitchforks. What anime would I recommend to someone who'd never watched it before? I mean, there's got to be a reason why people just glaze uh, Full Metal Alchemist. It depends on the person. If it's like a young man... The typical young person, like a male, like teenager, like a young adult, they probably enjoy solo leveling, Attack on Titan, hype, action, battle, shonen type of shows, right? 
It depends on the person. I think that slice of life is a bit uh, tricky. I think that the average young male does not care that much about slice of life elements, but there definitely exists a category of people in that demographic that enjoys more chill storytelling, right? It's, it's just all about, but I, I think the safe bet usually is like a, a battle shonen, right? Some sort of like action, some sort of like seinen. That is usually the most broadest appealing. And then there's subsection of people who enjoy rom-com, slice of life, right? Drama, uh, horror thriller, who knows, and so on and so forth. You are welcome to your opinion, but I also feel like completely disregarding anime, well, is kind of silly. Anime is a huge well of creativity. Yes. And I feel like even if you hate the vast majority of it, somewhere there is an anime for you because there's an anime for everyone. Yes, sir. And if you do wind up finding that anime, there's a good chance that it could have the potential to give you a completely new perspective. And that's pretty much it for Mr. Kitsune Anime. And... This is obviously his point of why people, you know, probably don't give anime a chance. To me, I think, again, it's just my opinion, but based on what I know about humanity and how quickly they're, you know, witch hunting, I think the degenerate fan service, right, the lolicon content, these etchy content that is way more normalized in Japan compared to the global audience really turns off people, right? They immediately just say this is fucking weird you know i i don't like little girls doing this shit some people may actually enjoy that shit and then another thing is again the whole like anime is meant for kids that thing that's like a more of a boomer take that's been kind of washed out as you know uh anime has become more mainstream kids are growing up more new generations are checking out anime the subtitle versus you know no subs like subs versus dubs for the completely new audience I remember, again, just watching, like, uh, I, I think I remember watching, like, Naruto or some shit, random episodes in English dub on TV that aired. Or even, like, uh, some other shows, like Dragon Ball or Inuyasha, I can't remember, maybe Yu-Gi-Oh, I forget. And then I remember checking that shit online and saw the Japanese subs, sorry, the, uh, you know, Japanese voice acting, you know, English subs instead. And that, I remember, like, a... Like a paradigm shift of, oh, this is weird in a good way. And then eventually I became more of, okay, this is the better way to watch it, in my opinion. And I, I think that definitely does gatekeep people too. But at the end of the day, you can't convince ignorant people to not be ignorant, right? It's not up to you to convert these people who will never check out anime. And they don't need to check out anime. They can enjoy whatever the hell they want and we can enjoy whatever the hell we want. And that's pretty much it. Please go give Mr. Kitsune Anime a like on the video. Here's the link. Check out his channel. He makes great video essays about broad, appealing, you know, anime content that I actually enjoy. So I'll see you guys next time.